Today I'm in Austin, Texas with Matt Reisinger. We're talking about the difference between furring strips, 3D mesh, and a dimple mat for a radiant barrier air gap. Let's get into it. What's up guys? Welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett. Subscribe if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. Matt Reisinger, good to have you back on the channel today. Thanks for having me, dude. We're at your house here, installing right. another metal roof. Really excited about it. We did another one of these 18 months ago on my old house, which had a comp shingle roof that was way past its prime, and I was waiting to get that metal on. But that, I've got my personal house under construction. I've been building 25 years, and I've never built a house ground up for my family. I'm really excited to have this one going. Yeah, for sure. And today we are talking about radiant barrier, air gaps and the differences between using furring strip method, a 3D mesh, or a dimple mat. Now this project is perfect to talk about this because you got all three going on at some point of the roof. Tell me why you chose to use a radiant barrier and tell me about your project here. All right, sounds good Thad. So first off, this is a 24 gauge uh, Sheffield roof. This is a double lock. And as you can see, I've got a couple different roof pitches going on here. This pitch that's above the two story portion is an A12, it's, it's darn steep. <laughs> it's a little scary for me uh, as a non-roofer. And then I've got some pretty low pitches on this pop-up above my stairwell. I've got basically a 212, and then I've got these 412s happening in the rest of the house, which are really walkable. So that's why I actually varied. Now, Thad, we've talked about this before. I think that a metal roof's easily a 50-year roof. Yep. So I'm always cautious as the builder to say, all right, if I'm gonna put a really good product on the house, I should make sure I install it with best practices to make sure that everything else besides the metal is also gonna last 50 years. And that's what I've set up here. So what you're seeing is I've got a Sharkskin Ultra SA underlayment. That's a full peel and stick. That's a bomber product, I yeah. really like it. Um, very sticky, very thick, has some good nail sealability. But I don't like to have my metal roof right on the deck. I like a little airflow underneath that deck. And that's what we've going on here. Tell me why you want that air gap. So we're in the south. This is considered a hot, humid climate. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of days where I wake up and it's 80 degrees and 80% humidity out. Yeah. And I see condensation on my metal roof dripping into my gutters just from the top. And if you have condensation happening on the top, that means there's probably some condensation underneath the roof as well. So by elevating your roof off the deck, that means that I've got good drainage and drying and airflow underneath there. So whether that's condensation or whether that's uh, you know a cock joint on a roof jack that failed and I get a little water behind that roof, I wanna make sure that it can dry out harmlessly, which means that I'm gonna give my metal roof the best chance of getting that 50, 60, 70 year lifespan and not prematurely causing water to sit up against it for long periods of time. Yep. And for assembly's sake, you have this radiant barrier here from Sharkskin. Tell us about this before we get into each individual product. Okay, so uh, I did black metal, um, which you might think is a bad choice for the South, because uh, it's really hot here, we got a lot of UV, but I honestly really like that black metal look. It's a hot color, I think it looks gorgeous. So I said, all right, how can I get the black, but also get the energy efficiency that I'm looking for? And by elevating that off the deck, I'm gonna help keep that metal up above the deck. We've got kind of a thermal break there. Yep. But best practice is to use something like this. This is a radiant barrier. This happens to be made by shark skin. And whenever you use a radiant barrier, for it to work, it needs to have an air gap facing towards the silver part, which means that on my case, I put the, uh, the th I have really three different options, three different ways I did that air gap. But I've gotta make sure my silver is facing towards my air gap. So for instance, on this 3D mesh, this is a Keen product. I think it's called Viper Vent. I'm putting this down face down and then my roof's going on so that as the sun's rays hit that, it's gonna reject that heat, that radiant energy yep. back towards the sun. Matt's roof isn't just built with an air gap, it has actual air flow. He's using a core vent product to allow air to enter through the eaves and perforated Z closures to allow air to exit through the ridge. This especially helps reduce convective heat transfer because the air isn't trapped inside the roofing cavity. 
So let's talk about the pros and cons of each of these three systems. I'm gonna start with furring strips right here. Now you are raising the panel off and creating that air gap between the furring strips, but I'd say the biggest con is now you are voiding the engineering on that system. To have an engineered system, it has to be the exact same assembly that was tested in the laboratory by the manufacturer. So that's the difference here. With both these, uh, the 3D mesh and the shark skin dimple mat or, or the dimple mat, um, now you're still attaching the roof to that plywood decking, which then adheres to that engineered product. That makes sense, Thad. On the pro side on the 1x4s, I would say this steep pitch here, this 812, I thought about these and I said, you know, that just feels sketchy to me to walk on uh, in terms of just overall workability for the, for the actual uh, roofing contractor. This is Straight Line Solutions doing it for me. And it made a lot of sense for me mentally to go, you know what, let's attach these solid uh, one by fours. They're kind of gonna act as tow boards. Just generally speaking, I know we're all tied off. It just feels safer to me to use that one by four. And I'm not in a high wind zone, so I wasn't super worried about having perfect engineering. Uh, I'm pretty inland here, I'm not coastal. Uh, I don't have codes that require a wind rating. So that's why I went with the one by four on that. Sure. On the other hand, for the low slope roofs, when it comes to the pros, I like these because honestly, they're a little less costly. Uh, this 3D mesh, really easy to put down, um, really easy to screw through. You know, I've got, like I said earlier, a 412 pitch, so easy to walk on. The dimple mat is an option as well, although my roofer didn't quite like the attachment uh, to this. He thought it was a little bit uh, harder for him. So this is the one that we didn't use uh, quite as much, and we really used the uh, 3D mesh uh, from Keen on most of the flatter roofs, and then the uh, one by four on the really steep pitch. The dimple mat is more rigid than a 3D mesh product, and because it compresses less, you will be able to get a little bit more elevation. Four tenths of an inch for the shark skin ventilated dimple mat, and three tenths of an inch for the Keen 3D mesh Viper Vent CDR product. Do note, neither the dimple mat or 3D mesh provides enough air gap for proper above deck ventilation. If you have vaulted ceilings, a conditioned attic, or any non-vented attic, you'll need a minimum of three quarters of an inch airspace to provide airflow above the deck. The air gap created by the dimple mat and 3D mesh is mainly used to provide a thermal break to help improve the system's cool roofing properties. All right, Matt, thanks so much. I'm glad that we could talk about the difference between furring strips, 3D mesh, and a dimple mat. Really excited to get this roof on for you. Guys, yeah, if you're not currently on the Build Show, go check me out. It's youtube.com backslash Matt Reisinger. We shoot the Build Show. Sheffield's one of our longtime friends because honestly, metal roofs, I mean, they are the top choice for all of my projects. I put more metal on than any other roof material over the last 15 years I've been in business. So thanks for your partnership, brother. Absolutely. And we got plenty more stuff coming down the pipeline with Matt Reisinger later on this year. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing channel for more. We release on Mondays and Wednesdays and you release on Tuesdays and Fridays. Comment down below with questions and we'll catch you next time.